All right, another antenna. People are probably getting bored of this, but look at this. Look at this. Look at this bad boy. It's huge. Um, yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I don't know, I think about six inches long, something like that. Maybe eight inches long and six inches wide. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is definitely log periodic. You can see that the distance between the elements here gets smaller and smaller, smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller in a logarithmic ratio. So um, yeah, there you go. And of course, high frequencies will use this part of the antenna and lower frequencies will use this part of the antenna. It's got this goofy connector on it. I'm not quite sure about the goofy connector. It, you know, you can put a cable on here and then kind of kind of run it down here. You're not going to solder it on even though it's clear here. Um, but yeah, I kind of showed that to you. Um, so what, how is this PC board constructed? So let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at this drawing here. So these are some of the elements and the, it's, it's a, a phased differently. So you, you bring in your, 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 uh, your plus and minus signal here, right? You're, um, going to take this one and connect to this antenna here, right? But then you're going to connect it like this next time. And then you're going to connect it like this next time. So this one is, is, is running this way. This one runs this way. This one runs this way. Um, so that's the way that the, a true log periodic is, is made to have this, uh, alternating, uh, phase. And, um, the way that they accomplish that is to have, uh, the top of the PC board have elements that look like this and the bottom of the PC board have elements that look like this. And then when they're on top of one another, uh, they end up being that up there. Okay. So one side is ground and one side is signal or, you know, positive, negative or center connector. Anyway, it should be fed ideally with a balanced feed line. And so there's just the left side and the right side is the more accurate way to say it. There's just a left side and a right side. Um, no such thing as ground, no such thing as signal. It's just one side of the, um, transmission and the other side of the transmission. And that's the way it propagates. Now, this is kind of funny. Um, I'm not sure what frequency is this, what, what we'll have to put on the analyzer and see what frequencies this can go down to or, or up to. Um, it's got some holes in it here, which I find very, very odd. Um, but, and then it has these, which are marked, but not drilled. So I don't know what was going on down this way, but, uh, yeah, let's uh, put a cable on it. Uh, let's see if I can find a, let's see if I can find a cable for this thing. All right. I'll, uh, start this on there. Might be better, better just to remove this connector and solder a coax down onto it, but I'm not quite sure. So we'll, we'll connect this one up here and then we can lay this down here. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, Let's take this over to the VNA and try it out. All right, I just freshly calibrated the machine. Let's uh, connect the antenna. Let's see here. And it's gonna be next to a whole bunch of stuff. So it's kind of hard to, kind of hard to get it into an anechoic chamber situation, but we can see it starts operating. Let's put a marker here. The, the longest uh, uh, elements seem to be oscillating around 900 megahertz, and then it will go up. So 900, there's one at 1044, there's one at, 1211, um, and obviously this will probably go up higher in frequency. This tops out at 1.3. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and um, put it on a different, put it on a different machine uh, so we can go higher in, uh, higher in frequency. Let's change the scale here to five. 
Yeah, see, it's actually quite good, right? Minus 15. So it's operating from 800 megahertz and up just fine. Uh, so it looks pretty good. We're getting a 15 dB return loss, so everything looks really good. All right, so we have the antenna hooked up. I'm trying to kind of point it away from everything. And uh, I'll, this thing is impossible to photograph, so I'll take a picture of it and uh, we can take a look at it. And uh, it seems pretty the same. It has these bumpies out here because of each element is going to be a little bit better than the between the elements is going to be a little bit worse. And you can see it runs all the way out to 4.4 gigahertz there, but it doesn't have a great match. It, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't have a great SWR. Well, well, I'll take a couple pictures here. Yeah, so there you go. Um, this is between 500 and 4.4 gigahertz. And yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of a minus 10 at best, right? It's kind of bumping up and down there. We'll, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and we'll call it a minus 10 uh, antenna. We take a look at this in uh, uh, SWR and it's kind of a 2.2 to 1, sometimes worse, sometimes better an antenna. So yeah, it's not great. And you can see the periodic nature of it, um, periodic nature of it here. Anyway, short video. If you're thinking about getting one of these antennas, that's kind of what it does. And uh, uh, I think if I were going to use this thing, I would uh, glue down the coax. Uh, I don't think I would solder it down, although it might be interesting to see if it gets better with a, with a soldered, down, uh, soldered down coax. Uh, it's possible. Um, but unlikely. <laughs> uh, or maybe drill a couple extra holes close in and put a cable tie on it to keep it in the middle there. Anyway, I don't know. It's a big fancy antenna that mm, works kind of, sort of, maybe.